All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, panelists, if you have any further questions, feel free to type those questions privately into the chat box and we can help you troubleshoot. Um, but we are going to kick off our 9 a.m. project exhibition for today. We are really excited for all of you to be on. Um, we want to welcome all of you to the 2019 iEARN project exhibition. Um, we are excited about this virtual event today. Um, and we are happy to see so many of you joining. This event will showcase the inspiring project work and outcomes achieved by iron classrooms around the world. Today, you'll hear directly from educators and youth about their iron project work and their final products. Before we begin, let's go over um, a quick uh, review of the Zoom webinar and the that you will see today. Um, so you as a participant will be able to see the PowerPoint presentation on the screen. You will be able to see the presenters that are speaking and you also have access to the chat box. So everybody right now should find their chat box um and make sure that you have access to that chat box feel free to type a quick hello to everyone there now and let us know where you are connecting from um, also please make sure that in your chat box it is set to all panelists and attendees this way everybody who is attending today can see your message if you only write it to all panelists it will only be the presenters that will see your message so please make sure to switch your messages to all panelists and attendees Great. Um, also, just a quick note that we are recording this webinar and it will be available afterwards on our Facebook page and YouTube um, if you'd like to watch it again or share it out with friends and or colleagues. Okay, so for those of you that are new to IRON, um, here today. I did want to give a brief introduction um, to the International Education and Resource Network. So I earn is an international organization made up of country centers all around the world. It began in 1988 when a class in New York State wanted to connect their their students to classrooms in the Soviet Union. This was post Cold War and they wanted to increase relationships between um, students in these two areas. They connected um, through something called the Lumaphone. <clears throat> which at that time was very high-tech technology, um, and they were actually able to send, send rudimentary video messages back and forth through the phone line. It's kind of like a big phone fax machine. Since then, um, in the last 30 years, um, now almost 31, uh, iEARN has grown into a large international community um, of educators and youth in over 140 different countries that are engaging in online collaborative global projects. IEARN's global projects um, are all teacher designed and facilitated. We have over 100 projects that educators and students can participate in. These projects are all global project-based learning um, or use project-based learning as a model in their projects. The projects and activities are primarily asynchronous activities, meaning classrooms can join on their own time zones and connect on their own schedule. Classrooms also often use synchronous activities where they are connecting on video conferences. The IRON projects um, contain discussion forums where students are engaging in cross-cultural communication and discussions, and they are also sharing various forms of media in the forum. IRON projects connect to diverse subject areas and languages, 
and they also all align with one of the 17 sustainable development goals. Um, this is something that IRON is very proud of in the last few year, years. We've been able to align all of our projects with the SDGs. Um, in the 30 years of IRON existence, all of the projects have answered the question of how will this project improve life on our planet? And now we are able to formally align them with the UN Sustainable Development Goal. Great, so we are so excited today to showcase four different iron projects. During this ex exhibition this morning, we will be showcasing Girl Rising, World We Live In, My School, Your School, Finding Solutions to, and Finding Solutions to Hunger. We will also share a exhibition compilation video to share some of the project work of teachers and students that weren't able to present live today. We have a fabulous guest host joining us today who will be introducing each of our featured projects. Laura Nietzer is joining us from the US. She's from the state of New Jersey. Laura has 27 years of teaching experience. She has taught first, fourth, and sixth grade, and she has been doing iron projects for nine years. So I am going to hand things over to Laura to kick us off for today. Thank you, Rachel. I hope everyone can hear me, and I'm really excited to be here this morning. The first project we would like to showcase today is Iron's Girl Rising project. This project is centered around the Girl Rising documentary and curriculum. Girl Rising journeys around the globe to witness the strength of the human spirit and the power of education to change the world. Students get to know nine unforgettable girls living in the developing world. Ordinary girls who confront tremendous challenges and overcome nearly impossible odds to achieve their dreams and obtain a quality education. Students in the I Earn Girl Rising project view the girls' stories and engage in a virtual exchange, discussing issues related to gender, in gender equality and quality education around the world. Today, we have two teachers presenting on The Girl Rising. The first is Mari Sakine from Japan. Mari has been an iron educator for seven years. She did The Girl Rising project with her 10th and 12th graders at Keimei Gakuen High School in Tokyo. Please welcome Mari from Japan. Okay, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Mari. Can okay, you that's good. Can see you now. Great. Great. Yes. I don't know what something is wrong. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, Mari, we can hear and yeah. see you. But I can't see the slide. Oh, myself. Oh, okay. Here I am. Okay. Can I start now? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy, very happy to give presentation on Girl Rising today. Uh, I'd like to introduce how Girl Rising has inspired my students showing slides, which I prepared. This is a photo of my global studies student in 2018, last year. My school is Keimei Gakuen, which is located in suburb of Tokyo, Japan. Next slide, please. Okay, in April, the students in the United States, Georgia, Israel, Morocco, Uganda, India, and Japan collaborated on the project. They were able to search for ongoing discussion groups with students of these countries. Next, please. Next slide. Yes. In June, we could have a Skype conference with the students of Sunburst Academy in the U.S. and then students. <clears throat> we shared not only the contents of Girl Rising Raised, but also the details of each other's home country, culture, fashion, school life, and so on. 
Next, please. Now I'd like to share one of my students' thoughts about a perfect society. Uh, the basic idea of a perfect society varies according to each individual, but the same general concept usually remain quite similar. Highly advanced technology, beautiful landscape in hundreds of different shades of green, with plentiful amounts of peace and happiness. Uh, gender equality, however, is something that seems to left out of the typical picture of the perfect society, even in one of the most developed nations uh, where all men are created equal, there are still many restricting gender roles woven deeply into society. Consequently, creating discrimination based solely on the gender of another human being. Gender roles have been suffocating women since the beginning of social standards and norms. Next, in order to create the perfect society that is imagined by authors and dreamers all over the planet, the idea of missed opportunities because of confined gender roles needs to be thrown away. But sadly, just like war, gender inequality has not vanished, especially when gender roles are related to the country's religion or culture. It is more difficult to change the strict prejudice of how women should be. However, the biggest problem about gender inequality is that most women are simply unaware of it. Through Girl Rising, we saw many young girls discover gender inequality in their society and fought against it. And thanks to them, we can now see gender inequality in the world too. The next move for us is to fight against, just like all the brave young girls in Girl Rising did. Even if 100% gender equality is something that can never be achieved, we have learned that it is something so worth fighting for. This is by Lena. Next slide, yes. As the final product of the Girl Rising in class, my students created posters. Next, please. In December, Allen, the teacher of Sunburst Academy in California, visited our school so we could meet him in person. Through Girl Rising, my students were ready to stand up and take action. Yes, Girl Rising certainly taught us how to be a global citizen. The students have learned how education is important and has a power to change one's life. Okay, actually I started teaching Girl Rising five years ago. And since then my students have worked on a unique service project called Stitches for Riches. It is a sewing and fair trade project bringing Cambodian mothers and our students to provide educational support for families in Cambodia. Next, please. The goal of this project is to help provide a pathway toward education for children in need. By working together with Cambodian mothers from the local areas, we are producing and selling handmade bags in order to raise money that will create more educational opportunities for their children. Every year we visit Cambodia to see the educational problems with our own eyes, helping us better find ways to solve these issues. I'm very proud of my students who have been working very hard to support the education for children in Cambodia. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mari, for sharing this great presentation of your students' participation in Girl Rising. I really enjoyed it, and I'm sure everyone else did. We do have a second classroom here today to share their experience in the Girl Rising project. Marzea Abadai, an educator from Iran, conducted this project with her junior high school students at Farzanagan Five School in Tehran. Marzea has been doing iron projects for 16 years. She certainly is a veteran 
and I am very happy to say I've met her on numerous occasions, so it's great to see you here today. And she's joined today with five of her students, Tara, Noreen, Halia, Pari, and Sarina. Please welcome the classroom from Iran. Okay, hi everybody. Do you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, first of all, I thank you for giving this opportunity to my students and I. So it's very great. And thank you for Mari for giving good presentation. Uh, two of my students are not connected. I don't know why. And Narin and Sarina, I don't see them. Uh, so I want just to introduce the Girl Rising Education for All Students project. And I prefer to make uh, and give this opportunity to my students to talk about their activities. Uh, just, uh, I will let you know that my students were so interested and creative in doing iron project, especially Girl Rising project. And they did lots of things that I prefer um, to make them talk about that. Their name is uh, Tara Robati, Narin Shatmani, Sarina Khodangadi, Helia Kushki, and Pari Qasemi. Three of them are here, two of them are not connected. I don't know the problem. So I will ask uh, Tara to talk about the uh, slides and the other students as well. Do you hear me? Yeah? Yes? Tara, are you there? Tara? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, talk please, Tara. So first me. Well, you know, we had to do some researches about education and outcomes to know and understand better why are we doing this project and why it is important. So these are uh, some of the education outcomes such as later marriage, it reduced reducing child marriage, human mentioning, and upbringing good children in future, literacy increasing, and also preventing HIV and other illnesses. And the most important thing here is generality. And also some other reasons such as poverty reduction, grieving, and it causes everything that's that are good for society. So next. Okay. Next and these one. Were so, uh, okay. Yeah. Shall I explain again or? Uh, yes, just talk about the activities and then give time to the next student, Helia and Perry. Others are not here. Okay. So this is our picture working at school and making some posters and other things to inform other students as well our classmates and students in our high school, so they could also know what are we doing and what's our plan and goal for the future. So next. And these were some things that we had to do on the project in order to um, get improve our knowledge and other things, such as watch a rising movie about those uh, non nine unforgettable girls that we explained earlier and reading I am Malala about a Pakistani girl and also we had to write reports every session from ours and things that we're doing and we had conferences with other participants as well so next Helia do you want to talk or you want to continue I think Helia yeah thank you so uh, much okay Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, continue. Okay. Mm. 
Uh, this is one of the sessions that uh, we were in the class and we have done something uh, in the class. Um, so next slide, please. Um, for uh, our project, we've uh, designed a logo uh, that you, you can see in the picture. Uh, uh, it shows a girl uh, in the world that um, it means that a girl can do anything she wants and learn anything uh, if she wants. And it's not, uh, it's not uh, um, connected to your gender or anything else. It's uh, just, um, um, it's just um, about your trying and you should try to uh, be what you want and catch your dreams. It's not uh, necessary to be a boy or something else. Um, and um, uh, uh, we read uh, we read a book about Mal Malala Yousaf Zahi that uh, I think you know that she was uh, she's a Pakistani girl uh, who tried a lot for um, for, um, for, for 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 women uh, for education of women and um, and gender equality and uh, she uh, she done anything she could for a women of her country. Uh, uh, we okay. Next uh, slide, uh, you can give to Parry. Yeah, uh -huh. Parry, are you here? Thank you. Do you want to continue? Or Parry is here? Yes, okay. Hi. okay, okay, yes, I'm here. I can continue. Okay, thank you, Helia. Um, you're yes, uh, uh, this is our board uh, that uh, we put uh, some um, uh, something on it, some pictures and uh, so on, and we see him on the board uh, to inform the students uh, about the power of education of girls. As you know, uh, in this board is uh, some pictures of uh, Malala. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Yes, continue. Um, okay, yes. as you see, uh, this is uh, one of our uh, works that we watched a Garazi movie. And um, this movie was about uh, nine uh, unforgettable girls that fight for the right of education in bad situation and society. Um, yes, next slide, please. Uh, okay, now it's uh, one of our uh, sessions that uh, uh, we uh, take the pictures in our hand and take a picture. And next slide. Uh, and about uh, Malala. Malala is a, a Pakistani activist, as uh, Helia said, and we had a book competition about um, uh, her story of life, and also we had uh, three winners, um, and we uh, give some uh, gifts to them. Uh, and next slide, please. Uh, Narin and Sarina are not here to continue, no? If they are not uh, here, so... Uh, after... Uh, uh, okay. Yes, continue. Parry, continue. Parry. Okay, um, and uh, as I said, 
Yes, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, competition of I am a lot of book, uh, we decided to make a competition about it. Uh, we had uh, some questions and uh, uh, we invited some students and uh, we told them to read uh, the book, uh, for example, from this page to this page and be ready for uh, this thing. And uh, on that day, uh, we had competition. And uh, in uh, our competition was uh, in two times because uh, we had some uh, uh, winners and then these winners uh, compete with each other. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is uh, one of our sessions that we were working on uh, our works and uh, we decided to uh, make a board on this set. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, dear Perry, I think that uh, let's, uh, let's, sorry, not talk. She's joining now. Hello, hello. I yeah, hello. Connect now, my internet was okay. really bad. Uh, okay, um, where are you now? Where? Oh, uh, yes, we made a board. Uh, we stick some um, things on it, like successful women in all over the world and in Iran, their lives and how they um, they catch their dreams and how education helped them. That's about the book. Uh, please explain. Sorry, no. Oh, oh okay. Uh, at the end of the year, we had an experience exhibition where people from out came and we presented our project and this is a picture of us um, and there are some people and we're explaining our project to them and many of them liked it and thought it's a good way to, dis to discourage girls to, for fighting and ca catching their dreams and right so, and our future plans for girl rising um, is to make a document movie, documentary about girls' education and their struggles in, all, in Iran and all over the world. And we want to donate some girls who cannot afford the fees, the school fees. And most of the most important ones, informing people of their rights and the importance of the education. Why should they have an education? That's the most important thing to do. And they already, other participants in this project, such as USA, um, where, oh, and Japan and Palestine. Uh, Hi, Lisa, baby. Yeah. Can I say something about um, something? Yes, yes. Thank you, Sarina. I uh, think that okay. Narin is not here. Yeah. Yes. Can I say? Yes, yes. Um, uh, one session, we asked people about their ideas about a project, uh, and they shared their ideas with us. Um, and they said that, and they say, they said that uh, we love your project, and you can help the world with this project, and you can um, tell, um, and you can. Um, and save women that they have power they have power to educate and they can uh, reach their dreams and and uh, live a better life okay thank you so much and uh, tara they like our project very much thank you tara do you want to You're say welcome. something at the end yeah tara
Tara. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, um, yes, please finalize the project. And uh, okay. as Narin is not here, yes, you can talk okay. instead of Narin. Okay, fine. Well, we learned many things about the, the project and especially the importance of why we should educate because the society needs educated people and also it's good for ourselves to educate it all the, and there are many advantages that it has so we should support everyone especially girls who has who have more struggles than boys maybe especially in the developing countries so as we said we should try to help them at least with informing people because if people are forgetting about how important is this they really didn't know when we were explaining to them and they were shocked completely so we should let everybody know and maybe they can help as they can maybe i can't help very much but they can we can also um, get home charities and other things that's it thank well, you thank you yeah that was incredibly well said and what a wonderful way to end your great presentation thank you marzea and her thank you so much so our next featured project is called the world we live in which focuses on how to improve the world through sdgs Project participants are invited to discuss problems of their life and sustainable development of their regions. They suggest ways of solution to these problems. They share their thoughts, ideas with each other by answering the questions suggested during the discussion, as well as exchanging essays and sharing pictures and photos. Olga, L Olga Luksha is here today to present on her students' work in the world we live in. Olga has been an iron educator for nine years. She completed this project with her senior classes at Braslov Gymnasium in Belarus. Please welcome Olga presenting on the world we live in. So thank you so much. Can you hear me? Olka, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Can you make sure your video is on? Ah, yeah. Start my video, okay. Great, so mm -hmm. that's fine. So, hello, my name is Olga Luksha, and um, uh, you know, I'm a facilitator of the project World Bolivian, and I've been a coordinator of this project for nine years already, together with Sofia Savielova, an official representative of Earth Charter of Belarus, and I, uh, I offer you to watch a short video about our project now. Just give us one second while we get the audio working. Thank you. 
So next slide, please. The main idea of the project uh, is to unite young people who want to improve the world they live in, who see the problems around them, but do not know how to solve them. Our project offers a good opportunity to the youth to discuss the ideas online on the forums, to find their followers, to see if there are the same challenges in the countries all over the world. The second part of the project is face-to-face -face meetings during the International Spring Discussion Camp. The most active participants of the project are invited to come to Brussels to take part in the camp. The main topic of the meeting is different every time, but is closely connected to the Sustainable Development Goals and Earth Charter. The participants try to find better ways to spread the ideas of sustainable development and the Earth Charter among the citizens of Brussels region. During the first day of the meeting, the groups work out various ideas, and on the next day, initiative groups uh, start implementing their mini projects. For example, they visit houses of disabled people in Brasov, kindergarten, hold a dance show in the streets of Brasov, and interview people for the purpose of promoting these ideas um, among the citizens. Afterwards, they analyze their success and failures in order to improve their initiative. We usually hold Skype conferences with the students of different universities, for example, the University of Trento, and members of uh, Youth International Educational Club New Line. They help us to add new visions to the initiatives of the, uh, of, um, our, and our ideas. Uh, the members of Brussels Gymnasium Self-Government organized a meeting with representatives of Brussels Deputy Council, where they present their ideas of sustainable development of Brussels region and get some help in order to put the presented ideas into life. The camp participants actively apply their ideas to the Sustainable Development Week Committee in Minsk, and uh, these initiatives are often placed into the regional plan of Sustainable Development Weeks in Belarus. Uh, I should say that we will be really glad to see new participants of our project, World We Live In, and together we can improve our world. So welcome to our project and thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much, Olga. That was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. So up next is the My School, Your School project. In this project, students collaborate with global peers to describe their schools and to show how they live their daily lives in their educational institutions. By participating in this project, students detect similarities and differences among schools around the world and reinforce their sense of identity for the school to which they attend, while they increase their respect for other cultures. Students learn about school routines around the world by interacting with school students and teachers globally. Mayumi Takazawa, from Hello. Japan. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. You participated okay. in this project with your fourth through sixth grade students. Yes. At, can you say the name of your school in Tokyo? <laughs> Magome. Magome Elementary School. Elementary School, thank you. And you've been in iron for two years. And through yeah. this project, your students ended up exploring and yeah. sharing about the upcoming Olympics in Tokyo 2020. Right. You'll also share a brand new project to I earn with a focus on the Olympics and Paralympics. So I and everyone else welcomes you, Mayumi. Thank you. Okay. Can I start? Yes, please do. Okay. okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Mayumi Takizawa from, to from Tokyo, Japan. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Today, I'd like to talk about my school year school project at Magome Elementary School, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I'm a guest teacher and conduct a special English program of this school. Okay, this is a school project for Tokyo 2020 as part of Olympic and Paralympic education in Tokyo. 
This activity's title is What Do You Know About Tokyo 2020? Uh, the video works? No? Okay, the next slide, please. Okay. Okay, this group uh, made cars to introduce Tokyo 2020. Okay, next, please. Okay, this is two years to go campaign. Uh, the student says, let's cheer for participating athletes from all over the world. Next, please. This is a metal project. We are recycling precious metals from consumer electronics, such as used mobile phones, to manufacture all the metals for use at Tokyo 2020 and sustainable society. Next, please. This is a user array of Japanese wood project. We are collecting Japanese wood from all over the country to build the Olympic Village Plaza. Next, please. Okay. Tokyo 2020 Olympics has five new sports. Surfing, sport climbing, skateboarding, baseball, softball, and karate. I made a personal presentation on our Olympic and Paralympic project, including IAM projects, and gave the cards to seven participants at the IAM International Conference, Virginia, USA, July 2018. All of them gave us thank you video messages. Navaraji from Nepal, Janet from the US, Uh, Patricia from Brazil, and uh, we talked about Olympics, Paralympics from Rio 2016 to Tokyo 2020. Next, please. Okay, back to Japan, I showed the videos to the students and they sent back their thank you messages with some questions about their participants' schools and countries. I shared this activity in the forum of My School, Your School project. Okay, so here, uh, finally, let me introduce a new IAM project, the Olympics and Paralympics in Action project, TOPA, uh, which has just started. This project aims to foster friendship, spirit of encouragement, and unity in diversity. All participating schools run about the Olympic and the Paralympic values, create sharing posters and encouragement video messages for participating nations and athletes, and hold a Zoom exhibition like this to celebrate the offering of Tokyo 2020 all together in June 2020. Facilitators Sayori Hasegawa and Mayim Takizawa. Next, please. Okay, please join this project and come to Tokyo 2020. Next, please. Thank you for listening. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mayumi. We're very excited about your new project. Thank Our you. <laughs> Thank you. So our last live presentation of the hour will be on finding solutions to hunger. This is a project where students of all ages begin to understand the root causes of hunger in the world and to take meaningful action for its elimination. It's aligned with the second UN sustainable goal to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Students of all ages, grade levels, and English language skills bring their strengths and ideas into collaboration with one another to find solutions. Suzanne El Saris from Lebanon has been part of IEARN for 13 years. She engaged her eighth, 11th, and 12th grade students from Tyree Public School in Tyre, Lebanon in Finding Solutions to the Hunger Project. Let's please welcome Suzanne. Hi. Hi, Suzanne. 
Hi. Uh, I've been working with iEARN for a long time. So I will just give a short introduction about our work because most of the talk will be done by the students. Uh, this is a part of the project, the end part of the project that we did. And we made like a food banquet to, uh, to show the differences between food habits among different people. So some of the students acted as beggars, other of the student, other group yani, acted as rich people and others, if you can see the first one, they are the poor people and the farmers. Uh, this was done by grade 10 and other grades came to ask them questions and to fill a questionnaire suggesting some solutions and suggesting why we have these differences between different countries. So this was part of the project and I will let my students in the video, unfortunately they cannot share because school is over. So they um, recorded a short video uh, explaining what's happened during all the stages. The, fir the first one, the one with the two boys, first please. This one, yes. So they will, they will uh, explain all the steps and then we'll move to the other one. we did many steps we uh, they read a poem uh, as mentioned in the I earn forum a poem about poverty and they drew pictures uh, related to the poem and they also watched videos and suggested videos about hunger all over the world and suggested solutions and at the end we did the food banquet and also the second video that we'll see now is a play done by students uh, it's a play about a Lebanese boy. It's a real story. We added things, you know, but it's a real story about a poor Lebanese boy and how he ended in the prison because of poverty and because of hunger. So I will not give many details because they will tell the idea in the video. So it's, it's done by students from grades 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, different students. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try
Okay, uh, so I will send the link for the video and uh, because it's not very clear to everyone. It's a story of a Lebanese boy, as I told you, and he used to steal food in order to live after he, his parents left him in an orphanage. And at the end, he was sent to a prison and he's still now in the prison. But we continued in a way, we made our own ending for the video. Uh, I will send the link and that's everything. This is the group of the students who did most of the work, but there is another group, of course. Oh, Thank you for this opportunity also. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for sh sharing your students' work. It was an incredibly powerful video. I know that we all enjoyed it. So to end this exhibition, we would like to share a video because there were many teachers and students who wanted to share their work today, but were unable to present live. So we've made a short video to include their work. Enjoy.
All right. I hope you were able to get a sense of some of the additional presentations um, and exhibitions that were submitted as well. Um, before we thank all of our presenters and say goodbye, I do want to invite all of those attending to join our other exhibitions today. We have a second project virtual exhibition taking place at 11 a.m. Eastern time. You can see the schedule and the projects that will be presented there on the screen. And then we have a third one to round out the day at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and you can see the schedule there as well. So we encourage all of you to um, join us again for our 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. exhibitions. Uh, and just to encourage those of you that are joining today um, that are not already iron members or if you want to learn more about iron please, please go, go to iron.org um, and if you would like to become an iron member and you are not already um, you can go to iron.org slash slash connect um, and you can join our fantastic iron community and do one of these many projects that we're here today Great. So on that note, I would love to end this exhibition by, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we are going to invite all of the panelists as well as our fantastic co-hosts for um, today. We're going to invite everybody back on camera to say goodbye. Hi. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for Bye. our presenters and panelists today for sharing their great project work. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye now. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity you. today. Feel free to continue to join us throughout the day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day or evening, Bye. everyone. Bye.